All right, so I've got the soundboard for the octave mandolin I'm working on. As you can see, I've got the sound ports cut out. Um, I'm leaving this modified scroll area alone. That's one of the last things I do once it's on the rim. Um, so I'm at the point where it's still really thick overall. And this at this point, I, I just use one of these kind of palm planes with the radius on the bottom. And right now, um, it's 0.32 thick in the middle. So I want that to be, you know, less than a quarter of an inch. So there's a way to, to go. Um, and over in the side, it's a little over a quarter inch thick. So the goal here is the middle needs to be about, you know, less than um, 0.200 of an inch thick. And then the thinnest part or the recurve, I try to get around eighths of an inch, less than eighths of, eighth of an inch. That's kind of game day decision once I kind of get down there, how the tap tone seeming once the um, tone bars are on. So this is just kind of a demonstration of how I go about bringing that thickness down. I'm going to leave the outside profile alone. That's pretty close. It needs a little bit more work, but it's close enough where sanding can kind of coax the final shape out. It's really the inside. You can kind of see I've been working in this kind of diamond pattern. Things I use at this point is just this hand plane mechanical pencil, and I like this little light thing. Press it, light goes on. And I use that just to cast different shadows, kind of orbit around the piece I'm working on. And then I have this uh, thickness caliper thing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start carving. You'll kind of see the process and the flow that I approach this task with. Um, so I already know it's very thick. If you're getting close to the final thickness, when you get a wood shaving, you could put it in the dial indicator and see how thick it is. So you have an idea with each pass of the plane, um, how much uh, mass you're removing. Um, so you don't go too thin. So it's a little bit tricky when you're planing the inside because you know it's a scoop dish basically but you have grain uh, orientation kind of slipping down and slipping up and it's kind of banked. So always be aware of, of grain orientation run out. Another thing I like to do, um, you can use a pencil or else have this little crayon handy. Um, I'll actually just kind of scribble inside of the soundboard. And that way it kind of Let's me see where I've been, where I'm going, where I need to go. All that kind of stuff. So it looks like a disaster right now, but not for long, hopefully. So I'm just gonna start carving. I'm being super careful near the sound ports. Some people wait to cut the sound ports out but I like having them cut out early in the carving process. So I'm kind of going diagonally across screen right now. And that just seems to be what's working best for this piece of wood. You know, different woods with different grain patterns. That might be, might be different. And I'm stopping with the forward motion, kind of at the point where there's start, I'm going down and then starting to go up, which is against the grain and there will be tear out. So kind of I'm going down. And once I start to go up slip, I'll kind of stop and just kind of do that and then I'll rotate it 
and work the opposite slope going down towards the middle. So. I'm just kind of always trying to be mindful of each pass of the plane. Sometimes it's easy to get carried away and not be mindful when the wood kind of planes off easily. And you're in a good flow, but that can lead to too much material removal. Always with spruce too, it's super soft and, and dense, so I always keep a towel underneath. Especially as you come down in thickness, you have less wiggle room to carve or sand out any deep dents from placing on something. So you can see all the, the crayon is gone. You can kind of see the pattern I've been going about carving. I see some shadows. Usually I'll have the above head light off and it's a little better. So let's see what the, the thickness is now. So yeah, it's brought down to under um, 300 thousandths of an inch. So it's at point three zero zero a little under that right now so it could be a little bit more aggressive what i'm gonna do is repeat that i don't know where the crayon went there it is so again i'm gonna scribble all over it and with each new hand plane session, I'm going to always put fresh crayon or pencil marks all over it. And then repeat that process. Um, This build of wood, it started out um, probably three quarters, and I joined it as three quarters of an inch, and then I started the carving. So, you an idea. So that's close enough you can see. Grand marks are gone. Let's see. In the 
middle is, yes, yeah, so that took about 10 thousandths of an inch off. So I would say two more of those kind of passes like I was doing and I'll get pretty close to that. I would want to use scrapers to kind of clean all the, the rough scrapers and sandpaper to get the inside then nice and smooth kind of like the outside is and at that point then i'm gonna mark out where the tone bars will be and work on adding the tone bars so um i'm gonna do some more carbon but that gives you an idea of the process the flow that i use um so hopefully that is helpful and i'm gonna do some more carbon